Hello and welcome to my channel on this very warm Indian summer day in the Netherlands. And I am super excited for the video that I'm starting right now and in general for the weeks ahead of me because this might be a video very reminiscent to the video I made last year in June when I read a pile of books in preparation and preliminary fun for my visit to Chateau de Versailles. And this month I'm going to do something similar for my trip to the United States of America, Eastern USA in October. My boyfriend and I are taking a three week holiday to New York, Washington and loads of areas in between around those cities like Niagara Falls, Shenandoah, Blue Ridge Mountains. And I'm super excited and I'm gonna read a pile of books and this is the reading vlog in which I'm gonna take you along. So let's just dive right in. I'm quickly gonna touch upon the books that I'm planning on reading and then obviously we will get further into them once I read them. So the first one, the first two actually, are books that I already owned and I'm very excited to pick up in honor of this trip. The first one being These Truths, A History of the United States by Jill Lepore, which I got I think two years ago for my birthday. This is a very famous, renowned history book or non-fiction book on the history of the United States. It's supposed to be very in-depth, clear, but also critical. So it also says, these truths tells this uniquely American story beginning in 1492, asking whether the course of events over more than five centuries has proven the nation's truth or be lied to them. And I've got an audio for this, which is great because it's almost a thousand pages. Then I have one that I've bought for my boyfriend, I want to say over 10 years ago, and so far he's only read this much. <laughs> But that's New York by Edward Rutherford. And if you're unaware, Edward Rutherford writes fiction stories that take you along a history of a huge city. So he did something similar, I think, for London and Dublin and probably loads of more places. So this is the story of the world's most vibrant and exciting city, chronicled in a novel as unforgettable as the city itself. And it takes you along the epic tale of the Master family. So it goes through several generations, taking you along through the history of New York, from the city's birth over 300 years ago to the tragedy and the heroism of 9-11. And thank God, I've also got an audiobook for this one, <laughs> but we'll see. And then I've got the last one that I already had on my shelves, which I've already read twice before, which is The Lost Symbol by Dan Brown, which you can say what you want about Dan Brown, but I very much enjoy his addictive stories and I really love the historical and architectural Facts. I remember rereading Inferno before going to Florence and this is actually the only one that does not take place in a European city. This takes place in Washington, which is also why I loved it as much as I did a few years ago because I am from the Netherlands. I'm familiar with European cities. American cities are a little bit more exotic for me and obviously as a European, Washington is not as old and a little bit more young, which also makes it very interesting. So yeah, very excited to read this. Actually, am we reading this now? And then we've got three books that I specifically acquired for this reading vlog and for my trip to the United States of America. And I'm super excited for these. And these look absolutely amazing. I mean, look at those covers. So these are three books by Bill Bryson. I've never read anything by Bill Bryson, so you better hope I love him because otherwise it's a very unfortunate situation. So we start off with A Walk in the Woods, which I already had on my TBR um, for a long while because I love hiking and I love reading about people going on hikes because it's very reflectionary, you really feel like you're there, you kind of feel like you're experiencing it yourself. And I recently found out that this actually takes place on the Appalachian Trail. So Bill Bryson is journeying the Appalachian Trail which stretches along the east coast of the United States from Georgia to Maine. So that's exactly where I'm going. We are actually driving by certain spots that go over the trail. So we might even hide some pieces of the trail ourselves. So really excited for this. This might also be a good one actually to take with me on the plane or read while I'm there, but we'll see. And then while I got that, I found out that he wrote loads of more books, specifically these two sounded very interesting, on America. So the first one is The Lost Continent Travels in Small Town America. Again, phenomenal cover. And this is actually his Acclaimed first success, a classic of travel literature, hilariously stomach-achingly funny yet tinged with heartache. 
and the book that first staked Bill Bryson's claim as the most beloved writer of his generation. Uh, so this is actually the first one of the three that I'm gonna read. I'm trying, I'm probably gonna start this today. And then finally, another amazing cover. I mean, this one really reminds me of, of Gilmore Girls. And this is Notes from a Big Country, Journey into the American Dream. And this is, I think, a collection of essays. Whether they're discussing the strange appeal of breakfast pizza or this jaw-slackening diaryness of American TV, Bill Bryson brings his inimitable brand of bemused wit to bear on that strangest of phenomena, the American way of life. So I feel like this is more a book on American culture and the things that people do there. Uh, and I think that in one of these, but I think in this one, he also visits New York and Washington. So that's also very fitting. So yes, super, super excited to read these three. And then finally, two books that I might be interested in picking up are the New York Trilogy by Paul Auster, which I bought last month in Antwerp second hand. This is a trilogy of mystery books, detectives maybe even, which might take you along the streets of New York as well, which I think might just be a fun, fun thing to read in between. And then finally, I have The Friend Leverage Reader, which is a collection of essays. And this is the definitive essay collection by her. She is supposed to be the new Dorothy Parker, and I love Dorothy Parker, so that seems awesome. I'm actually also watching Let's Pretend It's a City or Pretend It's a City by Marta Scorsese on Le Friend Leverage with my boyfriend right now, which we are very much enjoying. So this is the definitive essay collection from New York legend and satirist Friend Leverage. So yeah. That is the pile as it is now, as I'm thinking about it now. It might become different, it might change, but this is all the books that I want to read before going on our amazing trip to America. So this is the ambitious pile that I want to read in September. Although let's be honest, I can also read books in October on my trip there or on the eight and a half hours flight. So I'm currently reading The Lost Continent by Bill Bryson, which is my first ever Bill Bryson. And I am surprised at how brutally honest he is. Like he is savagely honest. These are the kind of jokes you make with friends, making fun of others, knowing that they will never hear it because that would be so savage. And I'm so far very much enjoying it. Like I really enjoy jokes that, you know, might go a little bit over the edge. But I am curious like how far he's gonna go. I think like, because I just checked and he is a white <laughs> old man himself, which he seems like, I don't know, a cute hiker. I mean, it could also easily become a little bit inappropriate. I'll have to see how it goes. I'm not sure yet. Like so far, I'm very much enjoying it and I'm thinking slash hoping that it's not going to get there, but we'll see. But I'm just going to read you a small piece to kind of uh, give an indication. And this is most definitely not the most savage thing I've read so far. And I'm only at page 53, but he's traveling Iowa, being completely hateful on the entire state. 
uh, on how boring it is. And also specifically on the people living there. The farmer next to me had only three fingers on his right hand. It is a little noticed fact that most farmers have parts missing of them. This used to trouble me when I was small. For a long time I assumed that it was because of the hazards of farming life. After all, farmers deal with lots of dangerous machinery. But when you think about it, a lot of people deal with dangerous machinery and only a tiny proportion of them ever suffer permanent injury. Yet there is scarcely a farmer in the Midwest over the age of 20 who has not at some time or other had a limp or digit yanked off and thrown into the next field by some noisy farmyard implement. To tell you the absolute truth, I think farmers do it on purpose. I think working day after day beside these massive treasures and balers with their grinding gears and flapping fan belts and complex mechanisms, they get a little hypnotized by all the noise and motion. They stand there staring at the rearing machinery and they think, I wonder what would happen if I just stuck my finger in there a little bit. I know that sounds crazy, but you have to realize that farmers don't have a whole lot of sense in these matters because they feel no pain. <laughs> okay. I'm just having the most lovely Saturday. This morning I woke up early, went out to get croissants. Now I'm just sitting in with my cat who is joining me <laughs> again because it is too hot outside. Like it's over 30 degrees Celsius, which is just too hot for us. And we remain in the cool 24 degrees of my house. And I'm doing a little bit of cleaning, so I'm being a little bit productive, but mostly I'm just reading. And I wanted to give a small update on these tweets by Jill Lepore, which I'm listening to. And it's narrated by Jill Lepore herself, which is absolutely magnificent, because you can just hear the critique and the judgment in her voice at certain paragraphs or chapters. And obviously we went through the entire gruesome history of slavery in the United States, so there's a lot of judgment in there. But I just wanted to say how amazingly well done this book is. So, so I'm not that far in yet. But first of all, this is a huge book. It's over thou it's nearly a thousand pages. But it's like one of those amazing paperbacks that just lies open like this. It's super floppy, which is just amazing. But also, every other page or so is accompanied with a uh, picture or an illustration or a painting to kind of accompany the story. And it is so interesting what's all added like for example here we have a picture of a newspaper that was published at the time which contains the first proposed constitution but we also have like political cartoons like this it just makes it that much more interesting to read so yeah very much enjoying this really think it's been done absolutely amazingly Hello everyone, small update. I finished The Lost Symbol by Dan Brown. Very much enjoyed it. I do need to say, I think Dan Brown's books are best the first time you read them, like every reread, second, third or whatnot. Uh, they become less enjoyable, for me at least. But still, very much enjoyed it. I learned about loads of highlights and their fun trivia facts again. I think that I've definitely put some things on my list that I might not have visited otherwise, like the botanical gardens near the, the capital. That sounds really interesting. I also definitely learned about some things that I might not have read about otherwise. For example, like the National Cathedral with the Dark Vader gargoyle or like the space stained glass. Like those are things that I might not have read about otherwise. And that's definitely things that I want to look for and yeah, go check out. So it's definitely served its purpose. Very much enjoyed it.
Hello and welcome back on a very sunny, lovely Monday. Just wanted to give a quick reading update. I had a very lovely weekend. Uh, we went to see A Haunting in Venice, the new Hercule Poirot Agatha Christie movie, which is just very enjoyable, very entertaining. We've placed grass in our garden, so our garden is finally becoming more of a garden. And it really uh, looks so much better. I actually also spent already some time in the garden because uh, Friday night a train of starlings was passing by that launched on Thursday. So that was really interesting to see. Yeah, just had a lovely weekend. I wanted to give a quick update. First of all, I might come back very soon as well because I'm almost done with These Truths by Jill Lepore. Like I have just read an entire piece on 9-11 and the impact it had on the United States, which is very interesting to read right now because obviously it is the 18th of September now. Last week was the 11th of September and I always kind of, you know, you, it's, it's one of those historic events that definitely because it's something that happened in most of our lifetimes still, it's very, it made a big impression on you. So I actually watched some videos on like the news coverage at the time, etc. recently. And yeah, reading about it now and the impact it made, it was very interesting, definitely in the context of the entire history. And now I'm actually just reading about Obama becoming president. So yeah, really nearing the ending. Very much loving this. I will definitely get back to this later, but this is such a beautiful book. But I wanted to talk about uh, the New York trilogy because I've just finished the first story in this book, which is City of Glass which was so interesting, so interesting. It kind of reminded me in a way of The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bukakov, which I really enjoyed. Just kind of the interweaving of a very strange story with strange characters and a strange plot with like known historical stories or myths. For example, in this Sorry, language is very important. Words are very important. The meaning of words also in relation to reality. And our main character also discusses the stories of the Garden of Eden and the Tower of Babel. And I really, really enjoyed, you know, going into those and kind of relating them to the, the specific mystery. Also, what I thought was very interesting, he really played with names in this story. So our main character is Daniel Quinn, and we know him under three names. So we know him as Daniel Quinn, but we also know him as his writer's pseudonym, which is William Wilson, if I'm correct. Maybe I've already forgotten that somehow. Uh, and we also know him as the personal detective character, Paul Auster, which is very interesting because obviously that is the name of the actual writer. So he's kind of breaking the fourth wall there. And I think that's such an interesting thing to do in a detective story because it makes you wonder why he did it and it just adds that mystery to the to the story that obviously you really want in these kind of stories and i've already kind of started the second story which is ghosts and in this story all the characters have names of colors so just to give you a small idea it starts with first of all there is blue later there is white and then there is black and before the beginning there is brown brown broken in Brown taught him the ropes, and when Brown grew old, Blue took over. That is how it begins. The place is New York, the time is the present, and neither one will never change. So yeah, so far so good. Oh, also, quick notice, I got this awesome lip gloss. Look at it. This is Felix Felicius lip gloss from Harry Potter. How awesome is that? Well, I will not bother you with it. Very much enjoying my USA reading. Very getting very excited to go. It's only two more weeks left. So I'm hoping the sound is okay because it literally started storming <laughs> all of a sudden out of nowhere. It literally has been thundering and lightning. We've seen it all. Do you see that? Not the lightning. Anyways, I very much enjoyed that when I can sit on my little couch while reading a book. So no problems with me. I just wanted to give a quick final update for today at least, which is that I finished these truths just now. 
this is really a remarkable book. Like the remarkable thing about it is that it's a very complete history of the United States, like starting in 1492, going up until I think 2016. So you get a lot. Gilles Lepore is such an amazing writer. Like often with these kind of non-fiction books, it becomes very dry or very dull because it's not written nicely. She writes so beautifully and I'm gonna quickly check. I found one thing very, like a very good example of how she writes. A photograph stops time, trapping it like a butterfly in a jar. No other kind of historical evidence has this quality of instantaneity of an impression taken in a moment, in a flicker, an eye opened and then shot. Photographs also capture the ordinary, the humble, the speechless. The camera discriminates between light and dark, but not between the rich and the poor, the literate and the illiterate, the noisy and the quiet. The emergence of photography altered the historical record. It also shaped the course of American history. Like that's just a random opening of a chapter. I think that is so beautiful and the book is completely filled with that throughout. Um, but yeah, I will get back to this in my reference as well. I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was amazing, specifically also the audiobook. Jill Paul really narrates it beautifully and clearly. So yeah, I'm happy that I finished this chunk of a book. Now I can start a new audiobook, which is going to be New York. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm not sure about this angle, I'm really lying down in a bit, but I had such a long day. It's Thursday night, 7.30 right now. I just came home half an hour ago and I immediately dressed into my pajama. I left this morning, I wanna say it's 6.30. So yeah, I had a long day. Uh, it's also getting a little bit dark already, but I just wanted to give a small update on my reading because I did progress quite a bit the last couple of days. So first of all, I finished the second story in the New York trilogy, which was Ghosts, and I very much enjoyed this. This is very similar to City of Glass in the sense at how it is structured and how you are taken along. So again, it is about detectives, again it is about writing and writers. It also again gives a lot of importance to language, words, names specifically in this book or in this story. All the characters have a name of a color which I'm not sure if it's really about the colors, but it's more about maybe not giving any significance to the per the characters' names, but just making it a little bit more anonymous in a way. I'm not sure. It's just, again, it gives a certain mysterious and strange dimension to the story. But it's just, it takes you along an intense ride. And I also felt like I knew the, the plot twist very early on. But once it was kind of revealed and it was indeed the, the, the case, I wasn't unsatisfied in any way, almost as if we were meant to know the plot twist. Like that wasn't really a plot twist, it's just a kind of a veil over the story. Also what was in this story, which, which was also in City of Glass, which I very much enjoyed, is the interweaving of historic facts and anecdotes. So this one had a very interesting anecdote on the build of the Brooklyn Bridge by father and son Rubling, if I'm correct, which is obviously an interesting anecdote that I might give <laughs> once my boyfriend and I visit the Brooklyn Bridge in a few weeks. The ending was very, I don't know if it was very surprising, but very strange and ne not necessarily satisfying, but still satisfying, like very, again, similar to City of Glass. So yeah, very much enjoyed it once again. Uh, and I've just started the final story, which is Locked Room, which already really caught my interest immediately. So very much enjoying it. Great, great book. And then I'm also still reading The Lost Continent, which I'm very much enjoying. And I quickly wanted to give you maybe a little bit of an excerpt on Washington, which I thought was so funny. So uh, he visits Washington and then we have this little piece here. I strolled down towards the castle now. The park was full of joggers. I found this a little worrying. I kept thinking, shouldn't they be running the country or at least destabilizing some Central American government? I mean to say, don't you usually have something more important to do at 10.30 on a Wednesday morning than pull on a pair of Reeboks and go sprinting around for 45 minutes? Funny in its own, I think. And then later, in the evening, I came to the mall and walked across it to the Jefferson Memorial. 
I had hoped to see it at dusk, but I arrived late and the darkness fell like a blanket. Before I was very far into the park, it was pitch dark. I expected to be marked. Indeed, I took it as my due, wandering into a city park like this on a dark night. But evidently, the markers couldn't see me. The only physical risk I ran was being bowled over by one of the many joggers who was printed invisibly along the dark paths. I also had a little bit of interesting on how he thought that the White House was much smaller than you would expect which obviously we'll get to see. I remember when my boyfriend and I went to visit uh, the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, which holds the Nachtwacht by Rembrandt, the Night Watch, which is a very famous painting, I think, which is supposedly huge. And I remember, and I had seen it before, and I remember my boyfriend standing in front of it and being like, I don't think this is it, it's so small. <laughs> which, will, again, we might also experience now at the White House. I'm now just gonna eat my pizza, because I grabbed a pizza, because I could not be bothered to cook, and I'm gonna enjoy my Thursday night. Almost forgot, it's Thursday the 21st of September, Booker Prize shortlist is being announced. Now, it might have already been announced actually, so I'm gonna check that out. But I just had a little bit of a catastrophe. There was a huge spider near the kitchen uh, above one of our refrigerators and I've lost it. <laughs> it was above the refrigerator. My cat is very much a spider catcher. I can just literally point to a spider or anything uh, and she will see it and dive on it and kill it. Eat it sometimes. Anyways, I hate spiders, absolutely hate spiders. That was above the refrigerator, so I was like, I'm not gonna point out it out now because it's gonna drop, we're gonna lose it, cannot do that. So I thought, let's wait for a second. So it moved a little bit later next to the refrigerator, but there were loads of boxes below. So again, I thought, risky area, let me just move those boxes and then get the cat. I moved the boxes and I think the spider realized that something bad was gonna happen. So it literally kind of pushed itself off the wall, dropped it below, and I've lost it. I cannot find it anywhere, but I know it's there, obviously. The cat, again, realized, hadn't seen the spider yet, realized probably that something was up, so she walked around, sniffed everything, couldn't find it. Lost that huge spider, know it's still in the house. Fuck my life. Hello and welcome back to my bathroom. I have no idea what I've recently filmed. I've been so busy with pre-holiday work and also even some social activities that I've not updated you in a while. But I finished the New York trilogy by Paul Foster, meaning that I finished the final story, which was The Locked Room. And oh my God, this really was for me like the epic finale to the book, bringing all three stories together. And it is very different from the first two stories, I feel, but it's absolutely brilliant. And while reading it, I already felt at some points sad because I knew that if I will ever read this again, I will never have that same experience because it is just so impressive and surprising and different. I don't even want to say too much about the final story, but I absolutely loved it, had absolutely no idea that something like this was coming and this was a phenomenal read. And in light of me going to New York, it really is interesting, an interesting book because it really takes you along the streets of New York and the locations. It's more of a vibe, the vibe of New York. But yeah, really, really loved this. And then I've also finished The Lost Continent by Bill Bryson, another uh, great read. I very much enjoyed this. This is full of interesting facts and anecdotes on 
you know, touristic spots in the United States. Bill Bryson is just traveling along the States and taking us along. And he is mostly pessimistic and sarcastic about it. But I thought that was very much enjoyable. I really enjoyed that. I mean, Bill Bryson is an American who lived a large time of his life in Britain. And I really feel like you can read that British sarcastic humor in it. Uh, I think I earlier mentioned that I was afraid that it might become offensive. I do not think it's offensive at all. I can imagine that people that might think it's offensive, but I mean, then just don't read it. Just put it down. For me, I thought it was just absolutely hilarious. I will say, the first few chapters, I enjoyed everything. Like, he was going through states that I'm not going to visit on my holiday, and I did not mind. Like, enjoyed it all, thought it was very funny, and I think it was just like the initial excitement of it. I think I will say that the further I got into it, that initial excitement kind of rubbed off and I started to enjoy it less, or at least I started only really enjoying the chapters on the locations that I was going to visit, which still he visits a lot of places that I'm going to go, like Washington, like New York, Great Smoky Mountain, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah. He definitely visits a lot of those places, so I thought those were very enjoyable and interesting, but yeah started to lose kind of the enjoyment of the places that I was not going to visit or reading on the places that I was not going to visit but overall very much loved it so yeah I finished those two yeah I'm continuing on I'm already in like packing stage I'm packing my bags and preparing Hello and welcome back in the chaos. It is Monday, the Monday before we're leaving. Tomorrow we're leaving for New York. I'm super excited. We're packing, we're cleaning, we're doing everything. We're right on schedule. It's going pretty fine. But I wanted to give you a final update on my reading. My recent busyness with work and social activities. We had a wedding, we had dinners, we had everything. I definitely haven't read as much lately as I did the first few weeks in September, but it's fine. In total, I definitely read a lot. So additionally, I finished New York by Edward Rutherford, which I listened to on audiobook, which I think is a great way to go through this book because it's a chunky one and this is a fictionalized history of the city of New York which you follow by following a set of characters there's like this is full of different point of views kind of surrounding one specific family and you go through all the generations and I really enjoyed this I think this is a very good way to get to know the history of a city without diving into maybe dry or dense history books so I think this would be recommended for everyone when I first started this, it really reminded me of the Kingsbridge trilogy by Ken Follett, which I loved. But I think the further I got into it, the more I realized that it was definitely a little bit different. And that was also kind of what would be my own downside to this book, which is because you follow so many point of views over so many generations, you kind of just get some fragments of their lives. And because of that, you sometimes don't get attached that much to them. I had characters that I really loved and adored and then, and then you just jump into the future X amount of years again and you just lose them. You have no idea what happened to them and I think a great example of this is also with, and this might be a little spoiler, you follow a black family from the start which obviously goes through the torments of slavery and fighting for freedom and then at one point you lose sight of one of the characters and kind of passing by you find out that he was lynched that he passed away in a lynching during riots in New York, which is so awful and so sad, and yet it barely did anything to me. I think that's because how it was written. It just, the characters didn't really stay with me. I think that's kind of what happens when you write a big book like this. I mean, you need to follow certain, several generations because you're following, obviously, the entire history of the city. So yeah, I don't think that's a way that we could not get that. But it was a thing that kind of made it a little bit less interesting for me. But overall, I thought this was an amazing book. Uh, and would definitely recommend it if you're going to the city. Really, really, really enjoyed that. And then obviously, a lot of my time went into that. So I didn't finish any additional books. But I am reading these three. So I'm reading Notes from a Big Country, Journey into the American Dream by Bill Bryson. Which I'm very much enjoying. Again, this cover is just so amazing. And I'm really enjoying this. This is a collection of essays on kind of American culture. I think it's very funny. I might still be able to finish that today though, but we'll see. I'm also reading The Friend Libraries Reader, which is a collection of essays that she wrote, I think for The New Yorker, but I'm not completely sure. And I love this. This is just so interesting. Again, it's a lot about New York and living in New York, but also just general life and society. Uh, Friend Libraries is a great reader. I'm very much enjoying this. It's very witty. 
she really is the new Dorothy Parker. I'm definitely not going to finish that uh, today, but I think I also have the ebook for this, so I might finish this while on holiday. And then finally, I also started The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, because this is apparently one of those books that is all on the New York list. If you go to New York, these are the books that you should read. But I only read like a few chapters, I think the first two chapters or so. So this might be a book that I want to bring to New York, or I'm thinking if I can get my hands on the ebook that I can read it on ebook version. So those were all the books I read, and then finally, now obviously comes a discussion, what am I going to bring on the plane? Because I only want to bring one, maybe two books on my holiday, because I think I might buy quite <laughs> a pile of books when I'm there. And obviously I've got an iPad, I can bring all my books on ebook. So I am most definitely going to bring, this is the wrong pile, I'm most definitely going to bring uh, A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson, which I've not started yet, and I don't have the ebook for this. So this is going to be my airplane book, most definitely. And then I'm kind of thinking, maybe, I also want to bring uh, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, which again is one of those books that is on the reading list that you might want to read when going to New York. And this is just an easy book, a practical book, for an airplane. It's small, it's a hardcover it's easy to go with and what I also really like about this I got the second hand that it's got a little note in there which says to NYC Aux 98 love William so I think someone gave this to his partner or to his friend either when he or she went to New York or maybe bought it in New York I don't know I just thought it was a kind of fun thing so yeah that is that has been my reading vlog I read a lot I learned a lot I had a lot of fun and now I'm gonna go and get excited for my trip and yeah I'll see you in a few weeks.